Welcome back. You guys at home know that I fancy myself the first MMA groupie. Joining us today is the current number one ranked UFC welterweight, Colby Covington. Okay. So much I want to talk to you about, but I want to make sure that everyone who's watching the show knows your story because, I mean, this sport has really come up. MMA has really come up in a big way. I definitely called it a few years ago because all of the other sports just went so woke. And the whole concept of going to a game, a basketball game, football, it's like you get to tune out the noise and enjoy something, you know, uh, with your son or, you know, whoever. And now it just seems like everywhere you go, you're being lectured. And the, the UFC sort of stayed out of it. We've had Dana White on the show. And now it's blowing up and there are so many celebrities ringside. And you have been a fighter for how long? My whole life, since I was five years old, I got into wrestling and karate, and you know, I decided that I wanted to follow this MMA dream when I was in high school because it was the best way to create a better life for me and my family. There wasn't a lot of money in wrestling and going to Olympics. It was, you know, try and get in the UFC and, and make a better life for yourself. So, so you're fighting, and you kind of almost turned your dream into a nightmare. It was about to be over for you. I want to talk about how you just became a household name and exploded onto the scene. So it was about to be over for you. Why? And then what happened after that? That just sort of totally changed the game. <laughs> yeah, so we talked about this before, about you know, how my career was pretty much made in Brazil. They, they were talking about cutting me. I, was, I had one loss in the UFC. I was like 12-1. and one. Uh, they said they didn't like my style. They said I was boring. It was the last fight in my contract. They said, hey, we're going to cut you. We don't like your style. You don't bring anything to the table, entertainment aspect-wise, so we got to let you go. And I was fighting the number two guy in the world at the time in Brazil in his hometown, this guy Damian Maia. And then I go on and I beat him. You know, I left him in a pool of his own blood in his home city. And then, you know, <laughs> I, 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 I called the Brazilians, you know, I called the city a dump. And, and I said, Brazil is a dump and all you people are filthy animals. So. I think, you know, I think we might have a clip of that. Let's watch it. <laughs> Why did you ask for this fight? And did it go as you expected it to? I should have knocked him out. Brazil, you're a dog. All you filthy animals suck. I got one thing to say. Tyrell Woodley, I'm coming for you. If you don't answer the front door, I'm going to knock you in. And I'm going to take what's mine. That what do we go? <laughs> <laughs> So this is kind of one of my favorite elements of the UFC. It's just the trash talking that goes on back and forth. And Dana just lets it fly. He's like, you know what? They're going to get into the ring and bash each other's head in the octagon and bash each other's heads. Like, what am I going to say to them? They're going to, you know, they talk themselves up. But you were in a tricky situation. You're in a different country. And how did they respond to this? They, they didn't respond well. I got a lot of death threats. <laughs> <laughs> they had to get you out of there. They had to get, like, the Brazilian Secret Service. And, like... <laughs> I was like, you know, I'm going to stay in Brazil a couple extra days, get some acai because that's like their, their food over there that they love and, <laughs> and hang out on the beaches. And they're like, nope, you're going out instantly. We're getting you on the next flight. Out. <laughs> they're like, put hat on and glasses and we're going to cover your head up with a, with a hoodie and you're getting out of here right away. On July 4th, 1776, we declared our independence from taxation from a government an ocean away. Today, it would appear that our government is the one that is imposing oppressive taxes, while at the same time sending our wealth overseas and driving the value of a dollar into the ground through reckless spending. This is the time to declare your independence for your savings. Cut your ties to the US dollar and invest in gold and silver with Birch Gold Group. If you haven't reached out to Birch Gold to diversify part of your IRA or 401k into a precious metals IRA, then you should do it today. Text Candace, C A N D A C E, to 484848 and get a free info kit on protecting your savings with gold. I buy my gold from Birch Gold because they have an A plus rating with the BBB, countless five star reviews, and over 10,000 happy customers. Talk to them, have them help you safeguard your investments. Text Candace to 484848 to claim your free info kit and to speak with a precious metals expert on holding gold and silver in a tax sheltered account. Again, Candace to 484848 and protect your savings today. But you did, however, make an incredible comeback, even though it wasn't really a comeback because you were already fighting so well, but then people wanted you because there was this moment, it goes viral, everybody sees it. And I think it would be fair to say that you've kept up a little bit of the trash talk. I just want to watch a montage of you in, you know, just in the octagon, just the stuff that comes out of your mouth. <laughs> First off, Joe Rogan, all I want to say is this is a real championship belt. I'm going to do what a real American should do. I'm bringing this belt to the White House and I'm putting it on Donald Trump's desk. You're soft, dog. I'm you're soft. soft. I'm soft. You're nothing. You know what? You get a call okay. from the president okay. today? You get a call from the president? That's right. You're a loser. No one gives a
about you. Everybody came to see me, so shut your mouth and listen to the champ. Did Donald give you any career advice? Did he give you any sort of parting words that are going to stay with you forever as you enter this next chapter in your life? Yeah, he told me to keep melting those CNN fake news soy boys. Stop it. He didn't say that. Yes, he did. <laughs> <laughs> it's just so good. <laughs> <laughs> it's so good. It's so good. <laughs> and so I think the first time ever in UFC history, actually, after one of your fights, uh, the president, then sitting president of the United States, um, Donald Trump called you to congratulate you live on air. Oh, the POTUS is calling me. Mr. President. You are a great fighter, man. I'll tell you, you make it so easy. I don't know how to have you do that. <laughs> Congratulations. I wanted to watch that fight tonight. I wanted to watch it. You were great. Thank you so much, Mr. President. You gave me the dragon energy when you shook my hand. That was incredible. What was that, what was that like for you, being a guy who came from nothing, worked for everything, said you're going to get you know, dumped, from the, dumped from the UFC because you're not interesting enough, and then fast forward and you've got the most important person in the world calling you to congratulate you live. Yeah, it was surreal. It was my career-defining moment you know, to have someone who I admire so much, who's a hero to me and, and my idol, to have me call and, and celebrating and saying how big of a fan he is of me. Like, dude, you're my, you're my idol. I'm a big fan of you. I appreciate what you do for America, for the people. Put us first and having you call and take the time out of your day. And he's like, hey man, I had to leave this rally. There was like 50,000 people in Michigan and I had to get back in time. I didn't care. I had to wish my favorite fighter, Colby Chaos Covington, Congratulations. It was amazing. And then he then brought you to one of the presidential debates. And he had, there, no one was allowed to be there because of COVID. And so there was maybe like six people allowed. And you were one of the people that he brought. Yeah, he put me on a very short list of people yeah. to be at his debate in Ohio. And that was just unbelievable. The, what he's done for me. I mean, when you support the Trump family, they, they really show their support for you. So, you know, God bless the Trumps. Thank you for everything they've done for us. Thanks for joining me on this episode of Candace. If you liked this video, subscribe to this YouTube channel and ring the bell to get notifications on new videos. To watch or listen to the full show, become a member today at dailywire.com slash subscribe.